Explorer 1 was America's first successful satellite launch. After the successes of the two Soviet Sputnik launches and the failure of the American Vanguard Test Vehicle 3, or TV-3, the public and some members of the government and scientific community were feeling that America was getting left behind in the space race. And as a result, the pressure was on for the launch both to be successful and also to occur as soon as possible, which is quite a difficult balance to strike. Now, the launch of Explorer 1 at the start of 1958, only a few months after Sputnik, actually represented quite a major step forward in the sophistication of the satellites and also in the scientific exploration of space. This has sometimes been overlooked just because Sputnik was actually launched first. Now, the Explorer satellite was actually launched in space by an adapted Jupiter-C rocket, which itself was based upon an intermediate-range ballistic missile. A large part of the engineering behind this was down to the work of Werner von Braun and other German scientists who had previously worked on the V-2 rocket. The final stage of the rocket was also shaped like a rocket itself and was designed to be spin-stabilised. Along the body of the satellite were fibreglass slot antennas and projecting out from the sides were four 22-inch flexible antennas, which gave it this a rather unusual look. Though Explorer 1 was about six times lighter than Sputnik 1, it was packed with scientific instruments, the power for which came from mercury batteries, which represented the majority of the payload weight. The orbit of the satellite was to be elliptical, its closest is just over 200 miles high, going out to 1,500 miles distant. And though the batteries would only last for about four months, the satellite would remain in orbit for another 12 years before burning up on re-entry. The scientific instruments in the satellite included five temperature sensors, but the critical information was gathered about micrometeorites and radiation. The micrometeorites were measured by two separate devices. First piece was an acoustic detector, to basically listen to the micrometeorites hitting the, the skin of the satellite. The other instrument was a wire grid. When the meteorites struck it, they would cut the wires in the grid, resulting in the electricity not being able to flow along the wire. This gave important measure of how much space dust was actually up there and how much protection longer missions may need in order for humans to have a reasonable chance of surviving in orbit. This leaves us with the radiation monitoring. The principal in charge of investigating the cosmic rays on Explorer 1 was Dr. James A. Van Allen. Using an omnidirectional guide Muller tube to detect cosmic rays, sometimes found expected levels of radiation, but on other occasions actually recorded zero radiation. It was Van Allen that noted that these zero recordings were when the satellite was at the highest altitudes, well over a thousand miles up, where it should have been fairly significant levels of radiation. It took a mission later on that year in Explorer 3 to find out rather than zero radiation at this altitude, the original Geiger tube had actually been flooded or saturated with radiation, and as a result, the number was too high to process, so instead it recorded zero. These regions in space surrounding our planet were na later named the Van Allen radiation belts. Explorer 1, 3 and 4 were successful in their missions, but Explorers 2 and 5 failed. The high failure rate, because Sputnik came first, the scientific achievements of the Explorer missions never attained the same public recognition as the Sputnik missions, and certainly not the level they deserved and being nearly a decade later to the thoughts about being behind in the space race, America and Russia were banished.